Hi there. It's Adi again, and um, today we're going to be working on lesson four JavaScript. First off, how you guys doing? Good? All right. I see some thumbs up, so I think we're doing good. Okay, give me a minute. I will switch to the slides, and I will see you. All righty, so let's begin. Today, we're going to be going over lesson four in beginning JavaScript. Here's our schedule. It doesn't really matter to you guys, but yeah, it's just important to look at. Okay, so here's some review real quick. How do you animate? Does anyone have an idea? Let's, uh, let's take a minute. Okay, well, the answer is you have a draw loop, and then you put some sort of code like, like drawing a rectangle. Let's just use a rectangle. And then you want to make the rectangle move across the screen. So I'm thinking maybe we have an incrementer variable, like a mover that we have to change. And we put that as the X value of the rectangle. And then we stick that rectangle into a draw loop. And inside the draw loop, we update the position of mover. So it makes it seem like since mover is increasing, constantly increasing in the forever loop, the rectangle keeps on moving. It keeps on getting moved. So that's how you animate, essentially. What is a variable? I know this is, we've asked you this a bunch of times, but it truly is one of the most important principles in computer science. So a variable is something that stores another quantity. So you can think about this. This is an iPhone, but today this iPhone is going to be a seven. Okay, so seven is the quantity stored in this iPhone right here. So yeah. And you can always change the value. So if I want to be like, oh, seven's not really working out for me. Let me make this 15. I would add uh let's see, math. That's gonna be about eight. Okay, sorry. So we add eight to that. Okay. And then finally, what is mouse X and mouse Y? So mouse X and mouse Y track the X and the Y positions of your mouse cursor. And these, are, these two are pretty important because you can use this to make a rectangle that follows your mouse and, um, or a rectangle that changes color based on where your mouse is. So it's, it's really cool. If you want to make some cool animated projects, uh, this mouse X and mouse Y are the things to do. All right, let's go to the next slide. So today we're gonna go over Booleans and if statements, and we're gonna try and animate using them. Okay, so what the heck is a Boolean? So Booleans can be put in variables and they equal either true or false, and they can be used in if statements. Okay, that doesn't really tell me much. For example, the day I'm recording this, it's Saturday, so, uh, let's just say, okay, let's just say today is Friday. So we're going to say weekday equals to true. All right. So the fact that it's a weekday because it's Friday is true. And then we can make another Boolean vacation and say it's false. At the moment, school has started for me. So it's uh, not, there's no vacation going on right now. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sad about that. But that means we can make a Boolean vacation and set it to false. So weekday equals to true and vacation equals to false. Something that I notice is that it's kind of like a variable, like saying weekday equals to true and vacation equals to false. I kind of relate that to saying X equals to Y. I don't know. That's just me. All right. So now we're going to learn about and state. Yes, you heard me. And statements. So if we say Boolean and Boolean, both must be true to equal true. That kind of makes sense. Or if you think about it, if you have true and true, that makes sense. But if you have false and true, that alone makes it false. Because how can you have something false and something true at the same time? It's kind of, it's kind of like a paradox. So, um, it's false in that case. In Java, we use the 
double on passant. So uh, you'll find on passant by pressing the shift key and seven. So when you click that twice, you get and. I know it's kind of strange, but that's just how they format it. <clears throat> In the example above, the and would be replaced with double on passant. So it's not fully English, but it's almost English if you think about it. If you think of your code as English, I promise you it'll make it a lot easier. So we're going to have two Booleans here. Tomato equal to true and falafel equal to false. All right, so tomato and falafel, let's think about it. So we want tomato and falafel, but we already know that tomato is true and that falafel is false, so we have no falafels. So we ask for tomato and falafel, we need both of them, which means it's going to be false. Think about it like that. Like we have a tomato and falafel sandwich, but we're missing the falafel. So at that point already, it's false. So that's just a quick thing. Now we're gonna go to or. And honestly, give me one second, guys. Okay, never mind. Um, initially we had like more fun. Let's go back to that. Okay, yeah, never mind. Okay, now we're going to move on to or statements. So or statements, if we say Boolean or Boolean, then only one of them needs to be true. So it gives us a little bit more space. For example, if we say false or false, it equals false because we only need one false. If we say true or false, then that's true because we have one true. We only need one true. In JavaScript, we use the double, this is a weird thing to describe. It's not L or I, but it's shift backslash. I know that's kind of strange. Like what, what the heck, who came up with this? But it's shift backslash. And we click that twice and that represents or. So now let's go back to our tomato and falafel sandwich. So imagine you're, you're a customer at a restaurant and you want tomato or falafel. So you ask the, you ask the, the chef if you have tomato or falafel. And in this case, what do you guys think it'll be? Think it'll be true or do you think it'll be false? Let's find out. It's true because the, tom the chef at the moment doesn't have falafel, but he does have tomato. So because there's one true and one false, we only need one true for the entire statement to be true. So that's going to be true. Okay, so now it gets a little complicated. We're going to learn about not statements. If we put not before a Boolean, it becomes the opposite. For example, if not false or false, that translates. First of all, we use the exclamation point for not, just to, just to put it out there. But if you put not false or false, not false, well, what's not false? True. True is not false. So we put not false or true. Which equals true. Kind of evaluates in that. Not true and true means it's not true and true, which equals false. Because it's not true is false. You kind of get it. It's a little, if that, if that kind of gets you a little confused, you can always rewind. Um, so yeah, in JavaScript, we use exclamation point to represent not. The example above, the not would be explained with an exclamation point. So now it's a little strange. So we're at the restaurant, we make a super strange order. We're asking if you don't have falafel, tomato, and not tomato, and not falafel. And what's that gonna be? Not tomato equals true. Or sorry, not true. So you're going to not have tomato. But then you're going to have not false, which equals true. You kind of get that? So you're not going to not have falafel. It's a double negative. So then you have false. So now let's do some more stuff. Not of, not tomato, or falafel. Okay, tomato is true and falafel is false. Hmm, why don't I give you guys a little bit and then we can go over this. Okay, so we can first put tomato and falafel in terms of true and false. 
So it's going to be not, not true or false. So that's going to be not false or false, which is going to be not false, which is true. So, yeah, I think the, the tomato falafel sandwich only got us so far. Um, Cause then at that point it gets a little too confusing for the real world. But believe it or not, this can be really useful when it comes to anime. And we'll get to that soon. Okay, so now we're gonna learn about the triple equal sign notation versus the single equal sign notation. What triple equal signs? Bear with me, guys. So we use a single equal sign when we assign values to variables. For example, variable number, we're making a variable number, and we're assigning it the value of five. So we're saying that number equals five, it's set in stone. Well, I mean, it's not really set in stone, but for now, number equals five. We use the triple equal sign notation when comparing two things. So in this case, we write if, which is an if statement, number equals five, we still say equal, we can say triple equal, triple equals five. So it's checking if number equals five. At the moment, number does equal five. So it would run this code, print your number is five. So this checks to see if things are equal to one another. The triple, uh, the triple, sorry, my bad. The triple equal sign checks to see if two things are equal to one another, whereas the singular equal sign just assigns a value. So there's no comparison going on. It's more like I am inputting this value for you. Does that kind of make sense? It really does. Otherwise, you can rewind. Here are some other comparing signs. So you guys probably know the greater than and less than signs. Here's a greater than or equal to sign, or sorry, a less than or equal to sign, which is just less than or equal to a greater than or equal to sign, which is greater than or equal to, I'm not very good at showing it, uh, the equal sign, the triple equal sign, which is checking if two things are equal to one another. So it's comparing it to two things to, one, to each other. And the not equal sign, where it's an exclamation point and an equal sign, checking if something is not equal to it. Something else. Okay, so now, here is a quick, a quick, sorry, one second. It's a quick exercise. So we're going to make a variable x, x equals to three. And now we're going to print x is less than or equal to three. So I'm going to give you guys a minute to think about it, and then I'm going to review the answer. What do you guys think this is going to print? Out? Essentially, let's see what the question is asking. It's a little complicated. Reworded. Okay. So, okay. So the, this code will print out true. And that's because we set variable X to be three. And then we print checking if X is less than or equal to three. In this case, three, is it less than or equal to three? Well, it's not less than three. But the fact that it's less than or equal to three makes three fit this. So that's why we can print true for this. So the answer is true. All right, so now we're gonna go over if statements. So we kind of already covered it a little bit, but this is how it works. We're gonna say if, and then we're gonna put a condition between these parentheses. And this condition is gonna be a Boolean or it could be even something like checking if something is equal to another thing. And then if the Boolean is true, only if the Boolean is true, will it do some code in this body that is surrounded by two curly brackets. Okay, so here's an example. If the Boolean in the if statement is not true, then the code in the else statement will run. So we have a string, Daniel is not cool. If Daniel is triple equal, equal where you compare it to not cool, print Daniel is not cool. Else, print Daniel is still not cool. Oh my goodness, what happened to Daniel? Okay, so let me give you guys a minute to think about this. You can pause the video. Okay, 
So we say Daniel is not cool. Now we compare Daniel and see if it equals Daniel or if Daniel equals not cool. So Daniel is not cool. Not cool equals to not cool. Bingo. So now we print the line Daniel is not cool. This means we don't have to run this else code where it says Daniel is still not cool. So poor Daniel. Now we're going to do an if statement activity. I want you guys to go on Khan Academy and write an if statement to test if X is greater than 17. If X is greater than 17, and set the variable to zero. So make a variable X, make it whatever number you like, 23, 1,005, 6 million, actually 6 million might be too much. Well, you got, you can do 6 million if you want. And then compare it and see if it's greater than 17. If X is greater than 17, make it zero. Okay. And when you're ready, let me give you guys a minute pause the video to do this okay now i'm going to go over the answer so you assuming you know how to make a variable already if you don't i highly recommend you go back to earlier videos to learn how to do that if x is greater than 17 set x to zero okay so this might be uh you might have to remember your old projects but you guys remember the car project? You know how we made the car animate across the screen? And that's cool and all. But the problem is the car never came back. Here, let me, let me actually show you guys what I'm talking about. Like, look at this car. It, it looks really good. It's moving smoothly across the screen. But then it just disappears. What point is that? What is the point of having a car it just constantly moves in the same direction. You can only watch this once. That, that doesn't seem very cool. And I wouldn't be too happy if that was my car because it means my car would be gone. So instead, let me go back to the slides real quick. Instead, I want you guys, oh, sorry, that's the wrong lesson right here. Instead, I want you guys to make the car loop so that it comes back. Because I want my car back, if we're being honest. Okay, so why don't I give you guys some time to do that, and then we will circle back. Get it? The pun? I should say we will loop back. Uh-huh. Anybody? A crowd, huh? Okay. Give me one second, and we will go. All righty. So, Here's some tips and hints for you guys if you guys are still a little bit stuck. At the end of your loop, of your draw loop, you can add an if statement checking the position of the car, checking to see if it's fully reached the other side. Then you can maybe do something by resetting the x value of the car, like the, like the mover variable. It's a lot like this, even though this is kind of basic. I know at least when I saw this first, I was like, what the heck? Why do we need this? This seems kind of redundant. But maybe we can use code like this to make the car loop back. And this is what I'm talking about, making the car loop. So if the car reaches the end, if x is greater than or equal to 440, x equals to negative 50. So it starts at the beginning, essentially. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna give you guys some time. You can pause the video and happy coding. All right, now we're gonna do the answer. Okay. Oh wait, my bad, this is the wrong project. Here it is, right here. Okay, this is the right one. So, R is going to move. And then, as you can see, it comes back. So, as you look at this car, uh, 
look at this car code. It looks really similar. Oops, minimize this. It looks extremely similar to the original car code. I mean, we have a mover, we call this X in this case, and we set it to negative 50. And then we have the car body, we have the car wheels, we increment X, X plus plus. By the way, this is another way to increment X. You could say X plus plus, you could say X equals to X plus one. It doesn't change a thing. X plus plus is typically how most computer scientists and coders write it, but there is really no shame. It's only for incremental value. Honestly, it doesn't matter. But then on line 24, we have this strange code. And it was something like I mentioned. If X is greater than or equal to 440, set X to negative 50. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, we kind of already went through it a little bit. But if X, if the X value of everything, of everything is greater than negative 440, I want you to send this car back to the beginning so it can keep on going. So that's how we see the car loop over and over again. Okay, let me go back to the slides now. Alrighty, so now here are some extra projects. You can animate one of these things. You can make your car go forwards plus backwards and still looping. Hmm. Make a sun that gets bigger as it rises, a moon that gets bigger as it rises, or a bus that moves a lot. So here are some extra projects for you. And now, yeah, you know what? I'll give you guys some time if you want to if you want to push yourself and go for that extra project. You can pause the video. All right. Now, in conclusion, you learned about if statements and booleans and you finished your car project. You truly did everything. I mean, obviously you can do more. You can obviously do more. But you learned how to make the car go forward. You learned how to make the car loop back at you. You learned how to draw the car. And if you did all the extra projects, you could do a bunch of crazy stuff, like change the color of the car uh, based on where you move your mouse cursor or make the car go backwards or make the car go super fast. So you can your car. And that's about it. So thank you guys for joining me this lesson and I will see you in the next one. Bye.